Welcome to Book Spectrum. I'm Chris Gordani. On Book Spectrum, we introduce you to an array of book genres from both longtime and new writers from varied professions across the spectrum. What's the difference between an average career and a successful one? Why are excellent communication skills and maybe even martial arts of critical importance? What's grit? Why does that matter more than natural ability? How do some people pull themselves out of poverty and into the ranks of successful entrepreneurs and professionals? Well, I have me a guy who says he can tell you how this happens. He's an entertainment lawyer and an entrepreneur, Norman Bacall, who in his book Take Charge answers the questions and challenges young professionals to build the skills which will empower them towards professional success. Norman, welcome to the program. Thanks very much, Chris. Great to be here. I like putting the uh, business books and self-help books on, but everybody and their brothers seems to have one. So I try to pick them and say, hey, I'd rather have the guys that can bring me something different. Give me something that nobody else or, or very few people can give you. This is one of those books. It also seems to come at the right time. We're in a, an era, and I'm going to put COVID aside. I'm going to put all the uh, economic problems aside. Young people are having trouble finding work. Young people are trying to make their way now. A lot of them are upset about their college degrees. A lot of them are upset about the opportunities open to them. But some are finding their way. This book can help. What do you think is the biggest challenge, Norman, that young business professionals face today? Like in other generations, there's a huge amount of competition. Uh, and But what's different today is the pace of change and how much there is to keep up with and how fast you have to keep up with it. And that's just part of it. But what I think a lot of young professionals lose sight of or, or perhaps don't even realize is that there's some very old-fashioned skills uh, that aren't being taught in professional schools or, frankly, anywhere else, and that if you don't have them in your, call them your, your quiver where you keep all your arrows, you can't possibly succeed. So there's, there's a lot to cope with, but there are some relatively not complicated things you just have to be aware of uh, in order to succeed and uh, in order to stay the course. How unique is this situation, though, for young people? And again, we're going to cast COVID aside. We're going to talk about what's been happening the last maybe seven, eight years. College degrees aren't even considered worth as much as they used to be. And there are a lot of reasons for that. But coming into the business world, whether it's with a degree or not, what is, what is that atmosphere like for young people? We're a little different. We were around for a lot longer. Uh, we were, we were, yeah, I, I was around a long time ago. Um, but I think thinking has changed. I think if you, if you speak to uh, this generation of young people, uh, they come to work life with a different starting assumption than, than we did 25, 30, even 35, 40 years ago. And we all assumed we'd be uh, going down a, a singular path, that we'd likely be doing one thing at one place for a very long time. And I think the new mindset is that uh, – that is extraordinarily unlikely, that young people are coming out assuming that every few years they will be doing something else, trying something new, um, and uh, which in some respects makes it a lot more challenging. Um, and in other respects, at least theoretically, makes it sound a lot more exciting. That's something we at our age should learn, Norman Bacall. Uh, we're at a time also where older people have been losing work, and that does have a lot to do with COVID. We have to change our skills, too. We have to uh, assess what we learned over the years, and this is where your book really uh, chimes in here. Part of the reason you wrote this book is to tell people, hey, acquire soft skills throughout your life. Look at what you've done in your earlier years and use that to become a better business person, business leader, a better entrepreneur, or even just more successful overall. That's right. I, really what I wanted was to create a greater awareness that things like uh, how you communicate, uh, and the starting point being how you interview, uh, are really important. Uh, your ability to, to speak, whether publicly or just even in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, are the things you need to take into consideration to strengthen yourself, how you communicate with clients. It's very funny because I was speaking to uh, someone who was in his 40s, I guess, and starting, uh, uh, not starting, but he's in the middle of developing his tech business. 
And I said, okay. And, and he, he called because he wanted some advice on how to pitch it uh, to entrepreneurs. And he sent me his deck. And I went through the deck and I said, listen, it, you know, that's all very nice and well, but you lost me on about the second word because what you presented to me was full of all kinds of technical jargon that perhaps if I was the technical person in the organization, I would understand. But the person who's got to make the d decision to spend the money on putting in your technology, if, if that person can't understand your pitch in about 30 seconds in plain English, you've already lost. So you know, it's time to go back to the drawing board. And I think we tend to forget, and particularly people who've been to professional schools, they learn the jargons, they learn how to talk to one another, they, they know how to speak to their professors, but when they get out, when they get out in the world and have to talk to clients, they can no longer communicate in plain English. And most of our customers just, you know, they, they want the lowdown in 30 seconds. And if you look at even written technology these days, nobody has an attention span for more than about that. Like you, you get 45 seconds into an email, likely you're, you're very likely wondering what's, what's just come into your inbox rather than how do I continue reading the depth of some long analysis. So it, it, how you communicate in order to sell your ideas is, is now critical, more than ever, probably. But young people don't learn that. And, and colleges are really guilty of this because they throw all these new touchy-feely courses at these kids. They have to take different sets of required courses. And it's, it's enough that they're sort of minimized on the, on the sciences and they, and they don't really get to learn uh, a lot of the, uh, of, of the real history of the world or, or, or of their own regions or anything like that. But casting that aside, communication skills are not exactly taught. When somebody goes out in the real world, they don't quite understand how to communicate with others. And, and the good thing is about this book, you at least give these young people, or and even people my own age, a chance to look at it and say, hey, wow, when I'm talking to somebody who doesn't speak my language, I have to understand that they still want to kind of get the feel of what I'm talking about, want to invest in me, but if they don't get me, or if they don't, uh, or, or if I don't talk to them on a on a level that they understand, I could lose a sale. I could lose their attention. Well, the first thing I teach in this book is, and I learned this from many years of hard experience, and that is the most important person in the room uh, isn't you. It's the person you're speaking to. And we have this tendency to believe we have to sell other people on us and our ideas and how smart we are and how accomplished we are in order to be able to sell them. Uh, when the opposite is really true, really, when, when if, if I'm a customer sitting in a room, the person I care most about in that room is me. And the more attention you spend uh, on me and listening to my problems and then trying to figure out how you can help me with my problems, the more valuable you're going to be. So we, we tend to have trouble, uh, you know, the, the, the toughest communication to skill, the skill to learn uh, isn't speaking, it's listening. And we, we have trouble getting out of our own way. Norman Bacall is with me. He's an entertainment lawyer and entrepreneur. He's also an author, author of the book, Take Charge. We're talking about that. You also point out that intelligence is important, but grit, determination, and again, the soft skills that you discuss in the book and, uh, and, and we learn over our lives and we accumulate and, and keep up with, those can be more important. It's interesting. I think we, we have this tendency to look at people who, were, who are successful and conclude they're different than us. Uh, and I lived it. Uh, I started out, you know, as nothing and nobody. I didn't have any particular advantage, advantages other than, uh, you know, I was able to afford an education, which, which, which was a big deal. But, uh, but ultimately, what I did, what I discovered in terms of my own success, uh, you know, rather than being a coach who never did it, I, I'm now a coach who did do it. And I discovered through my own trial and error that trial and error and making lots of mistakes and learning from those mistakes and picking myself off the floor when I'd suffered a huge defeat uh, was probably more important to my ultimate success than all my successes were. So it wasn't about my good day so much as when I looked back at it and said, okay, um, I was able to pick myself up after this defeat and, uh, and, and either start over or move on or learn from the mistake. And what I discovered, because I, I didn't just rely on my own experience, I interviewed at least 25 other professionals from all different walks of life. And what I began to see was a common thread, and that those of us who uh, had been 
or are now experiencing uh, career success were people who tough through the, t uh, the difficult times, who didn't give up, and most important, who weren't afraid to try something that they didn't know how to do. And if you want to, you know, if you want to tie this back to to the new economy and to uh, life during and after COVID, uh, the people who are going to be successful are the ones who can get over that fear of trying something new. Because it may be that whatever your skill is, uh, is is less valuable or has become less valuable in this pandemic. And the question becomes, how are you going to redefine yourself? What new skills can you learn? And most important, uh, understanding um, that not being afraid of learning something new is is itself a, a hugely valuable skill. I mean, some some psychologists call it call it uh, your grit, which is more important than your natural talent, which is your ability to sort of power through those moments when you just don't think you can do it until you learn how to do it. Norman, that grit is very important, and it goes along with uh, another gentleman who is a very successful human being, Robert Kiyosaki. He's the guy who says a lot of things, but one of the uh, most interesting things he's ever said that made me think really hard was A students wind up working for C students. This kind of goes along with your book's <laughs> principles, which argue that grit, determination, and willingness actually means a lot more in many instances than uh, just showing off how smart you are. That's right. And sometimes how smart you are or how much natural talent or ability you have uh, can be a liability, largely because uh, the more talented you are in a particular area, the easier things are, uh, the easier things come to you. And particularly if you're if you're inclined to rely on that, you're not developing what I consider to be the more important skill, which is uh, how you move ahead in terms of dealing with things you don't know how to do. And uh, and it, it's funny, some of the studies show that, uh, that, that people who, who are more talented don't actually succeed nearly as well as people who are less talented and will have to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Norman, this leads me to uh, the fact that you mentor young business professionals. While there's a whole load of the social media socialists out there, it's not really true of the entire generation. They're just the loudest. I see young people opening up craft breweries, other small businesses, working hard to find a job in a tough environment, and perhaps setting up shop on the internet. As for who you seek out, Norman, what character traits and qualities do you look for in the people you choose to mentor? It's interesting. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. Uh, and that's where I started, and that was something I had to learn from scratch five years ago. And, and frankly, when I began my social media life, uh, I, I was a bit frightened by it, just determined I was going to figure out how to do it. But now what I look for are, uh, are young, uh, largely professionals, but occasionally business people or people who are in transition, uh, and frankly, people in transition of all ages. Uh, who want to succeed, and usually I can taste it. Uh, and some of them are out of work. Some of them uh, I've, I've mentored a few people who've been out there looking for jobs, and and sometimes all they need is uh, a pat on the back and uh, like just stay at it, uh, don't give up, be pressing. And the, the one thing that I, that I, I remind everybody is that uh, if someone says no to you once, it doesn't mean no. It just it may just mean no today. And ultimately, and I know from my own hiring experience, and I, you know, in my career, I, 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 I'm not only an entertainment lawyer, but I, I ran a law firm for 16 years and, and built it from a four-person office to uh, sort of an international operation with about 1,100 employees. So I've interviewed a lot of people. And um, I, 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 on the other t side of the table, I'm always looking for people who don't give up. So the fact that I may, I may say no, uh, that, that I don't have a, a current need, uh, I've hired a number of people who just continued to persist. And the reason I hired them was I figured, uh, you know, if, if they just, if they won't ever take no for an answer, I think I want them on my team. There you go. <laughs> That's great. Norman Bacall is with me, the author of Take Charge. Here's something I do appreciate about the book, Norman. It tells young people things the business schools will not. We discussed use the skills you learned in your early years. 
But that's whether it's creative writing or martial arts or perhaps acquired communication skills when looking for building one's own business. Readers will find they strengthen and equip the business leader more than one might have thought. And I like that. Martial arts, that counts. But you look at it, it's not just uh, chopping blocks and, and uh, sparring. It's about discipline. <laughs> And that's important, too. That's right. Although I, although I can chop a block. I, I can actually do that, uh, you know, from my third degree black belt. But the one thing, the one thing I discovered, uh, and it was, it was funny, it was a sign hanging on, on the dojo for the first day I walked in. And it was a, a Japanese saying, uh, translated loosely, but it basically said, it doesn't matter how many years you practice. You will never advance without single-minded determination. And I was in my mid-30s at the time. The only reason I started taking karate was because uh, my six-year-old son had insisted on it, and they managed to talk me into to starting, and I, I was terrible for my first few years. But we're, we're, we won't go through my karate experience. But it was the, the notion of single-minded determination. I saw it in my karate practice. The more I practiced, the better I became, even though, I can I can assure you when I started practicing karate I I felt like I had zero natural ability, and yet over a, a span of twenty years I became a, a third degree black belt. Uh, and and what I discovered was it you know you you practice the same routine over and over and over again, your habits change, your way of thinking changes, your behavior changes, and you start to become a different person. And it's like that in, in the business world and in the professional world. I started out, and the reason I wrote the book was I started out uh, shy, introverted, book smart kid. I never had trouble getting good marks, but I was the guy who showed up for uh, 12 interviews uh, coming out of law school and got no offers. Nobody was interested in me. I didn't impress anyone with my interview skills. So... Um, once I once I was hired, I did okay because I, I always had a strong work ethic. But there were so many things I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to speak. I, my writing was thick. Uh, the way they teach you how to write write with law school thickness, uh, the kind of stuff no client would ever be interested in. And step by step, day by day, month by month, year by year, I had to learn uh, how to remodel myself. Now, there were a few people along the way who acted as my mentors, and I swore uh, when I was a young lawyer uh, that one day, if I ever made it, I would give back. Uh, and and I, I can point to a few people who were instrumental in, in helping me along the career, uh, and people who, frankly, didn't even weren't even aware of what they were doing for me. And I, I continually reminded myself, well, if I ever got to the point where I could give back, I was going to give back. And that's uh, that's probably the primary reason I wrote the book, because I I, uh, I enjoyed more, more than a fair share of success in my career. I ended up on the board of uh, Lionsgate uh, for almost 10 years. I was there when uh, we pushed the go button on the Hunger Games. Uh, so and, and I've met fascinating people over the course of my career, but none of that could I ever predict it uh, along the way. And when I when I looked back uh, a couple of years ago, and and uh, I actually went out to see, okay, somebody must have written a book that shows you how to do it, who's done it, and I couldn't find it. Uh, not in professional practice. Uh, you know, I've read Lee, Lee Iacocca's book um, on business success, uh, which uh, which influenced me quite a number of years ago, but uh, I had never really. There just didn't seem to be anything uh, that passes along all these lessons to a next generation and even to an existing generation. I've, I've had a, a lot of senior professionals pick up the phone, call me since the book has come out recently or, or who read it along the way when I was looking for some input. And who said, you know, this is a really good reminder for all of us of uh, some of the things that we forget along the way. It, and, and I think it's also a really good teaching manual for more senior people to get the most that they possibly can out of the people working for them. Let's go to your professional life. You say that, and this is a quote from you, I wish I could tell you there's a panacea that allows you to have a life while you're practicing law or any other profession. 
but each of you will have to determine what guy's your choices. And that's important because that kind of is uh, what you put in your book. What were maybe one or two of the tough choices you had to make along the way? Well, some of those tough choices my, my wife helped me with. So, uh, for example, uh, we had a, I, I did a, an awful lot of business travel. Uh, I, I was uh, based in Toronto, but I had a huge practice out of Los Angeles and New York. So I did a lot of traveling uh, and, and later on into the UK and in France. So I was traveling a fair amount. Uh, and we had multiple offices that had to be visited across the country. So I spent a lot of time during the week uh, away from home, but we had... Uh, we had uh, one particular house rule, and that's that if I was home, uh, dinner was at 6.30, and I was expected to be there. And this started when the when the, our first child was as young as, uh, as a year and a half. It was just a habit we got into. And so, you know, in the old days, you had to bring work home in order to do it. So I'd bring work home, and when the kids went to bed, I'd go back to work. Uh, but... You know, we made as a priority our family unit. Uh, as a result, I have uh, four grown-up children, uh, all of whom, fortunately, are, uh, are, are seem to, seem to be uh, finding their own way and independent. But that was that was a that was a choice that I made that uh, that home and being with the family uh, was critical, and it didn't matter whether I was doing a forty-hour work work week or a hundred-hour work week. There were, you know, two hours every day that belonged to my wife and my ch and my children. Um, so, there, to, to my mind, the real question is: you have to decide what your priorities are, what your life priorities are, and, and I think it, that's a much bigger mantra for the current generation. Uh, and then work your work life around that, and you can make it work. It doesn't mean it'll be easy for us. It meant. Uh, our social life when we when our kids were growing up was almost non-existent. All our extra time was was devoted to our to our children and bringing them up and spending as much time with them as we could. Um, so it's it's just a question of sitting down, deciding what your priorities are, and living your life accordingly. And if you don't want to work that hard, nobody's holding a gun to your head saying saying you need to. But you know if you if, if you're when you're building a business and every entrepreneur out there knows that. Um, you've got to make sacrifices in order to make your business work. And the question is, uh, you know, how do you work the rest of your life around it? And what are you prepared to, what, what are you prepared to give up and over what period uh, in order to make it work? Norman McCall, thank you very much for being with us on Book Spectrum. You can pick up the book, Take Charge, on digital outlets, but where can people find more out about you? If they want to find uh, more out about me, the greatest challenge is getting to my website because of the spelling of my name. Uh -huh. So it's Norman Norman Bacall, B-A-C-A-L. People always have a tough time with that. It's just normanbacall.com. Uh, or you can Google me. Uh, I, I come up in a lot of SEOs. Uh, or you can find me uh, very easily either on Facebook or LinkedIn. Again, it's B-A-C-A-L. The book, Take Charge. Norman Bacall, my guest. I'm Chris Cordani. Thank you again for listening to Book Spectrum. Spectrum.